<laughs> I'm going to menace you with a Halloween party like no other. Come along and I'll show you how. Welcome to the Signature Spell Bomb. We work on blowing up the Oathbreaker format with our budget holiday deck series, Holly Decks. If you enjoy celebrating the holidays and Oathbreaker with me, then support the channel by like, sharing, and subscribing, and turning on notifications so you know when we have new tricks and treats for you. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about Angrath's Halloween Party. It is a budget Angrath Captain of Chaos deck for less than $30. In the Holly Deck series, I craft holiday themed budget Oathbreaker decks designed to introduce new players to the format, and I take the time to explain how the deck works and how it was designed. In today's deck, we will be building an amalgamated monster of a deck that cares about treats, treasures, tricks, scaring our opponents with menace, and partying down. With the new party mechanic, since Ikoria and Zendikar Rising have given us new tools for both Menace and Party, I want to celebrate these new tools along with the Halloween holiday. Our menacing Oathbreaker this time is Angrath the Captain of Chaos. For 2 and 2 hybrid Rakdos mana, he's a legendary planeswalker with 5 loyalty, has a static ability that says creatures we control have menace, and if we minus 2 him, we can amass a zombie army with 2 1 1 counters on it. Angrath's art and templating is perfect for our holiday themed plan, with plenty of black and orange in his artwork. His static ability helps us trick our opponent's blockers, and his minus two treats us to some classic Halloween zombie hordes. Our signature spell this time is Tentative Connection. For three and a red, it says this spell costs three less to cast if we control a creature with menace. We gain control of target creature until end of turn we untap that creature and it gains haste. Tentative Connection benefits from our menace that Angrath provides and will even invite our opponent's creatures to the fright. So that's what's in our command zone. What is our game plan? This is a deck that wants to build an evasive army and make it hard to block. How do we win? Our goal is to have a good time and either win through tricky attackers or to collect enough treats to win the night. This is a fun theme deck, but it's not super competitive by nature, so it has a power level of 6. Now, on to the breakdown. Let's start with the treats that will help us set up our tricks in, have some candy. We're running Prime Blade. For one colorless mana, it gives an equipped creature plus one plus O, oh, and whenever the equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, we create a treasure token, and it equips for two mana. Rakdos Signet, for two colorless, we can pay one mana to tap it and generate one of both of our colors. And Treasure Map, for two colorless mana, we can pay one and tap and scry with it, and put a landmark counter on Treasure Map. Then if there are three more counters on it, remove those counters and transform it, and get to create three treasure tokens. When it trans transforms, it becomes Treasure Code. It can tap for colorless mana, or we can tap it and sacrifice treasure to draw a card. Next, we have Shiny Impetus. For two and a red, we can enchant a creature. The enchanted creature gets plus two, plus two, and is goaded. Whenever the enchanted creature attacks, we get to create a treasure token. Ruthless Nave for two and a black is a three, two creature. If we pay two and a black and sacrifice a creature, we create two treasure artifact tokens. Pitiless Splendorer for three and a black is a one, four human pirate, and whenever another creature we control dies, we create a treasure token. Godrak the Crown Scourge for two and a red is a 5-4 legendary dragon with flying. He can't attack unless we control four or more artifacts, and at the beginning of our end step, we create a treasure token for each non-token creature that died this turn. Next, Rebel in Riches for four and a black says whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, we create a colorless treasure token. At the beginning of our upkeep, if we control ten or more treasures, we win the game. Now, Revel in Riches is our card that will let us win the night by having enough treat. In section two, we'll be focusing on getting the party started with some creatures that can fill in in any role of our party mechanic in Party Starters. Changeling Outcast for one black mana is a 1-1 changeling that can't block and can't be blocked. Universal Automaton for one colorless mana is a 1-1 changeling. Skeletal Changeling for one and a black is a 1-1 changeling and we can pay one and a black to regenerate it. Ghostly Changeling costs two and a black and if we pay one and a black we can pump it by plus one plus one. And Moon Glove Changeling for two and a black is a 2-2 changeling, and we can pay 1 to give it death touch during the turn. Now the beauty of changelings is they count as all creature types at all times. Now as always, we need to figure out how we're going to keep the party going all night long in 
party favors. Glint Sleeve Siphoner for one in a black. It's a 2-1 menace creature. Whenever she enters the battlefield or attacks, we create one energy. At the beginning of our upkeep, we may spend two energy, and if we do, we draw a card and lose one life. Sin Prodder for two and a red has menace, and at the beginning of our upkeep, we reveal the top card of our library. Our opponents may have us put that card in our graveyard, but if they do, they're going to take damage equal to that card's converted mana cost. Otherwise, we put the card into our hand. Griven, Praetor Captain, for 3, a black and a red, is a 5-5 five, five menace creature. He gets plus X plus O each turn, or X is the amount of life we've lost in a turn. Whenever Griven attacks, we may sacrifice another creature. If we do, we draw cards equal to that creature's power, and lose life equal to that creature's toughness. Many of the creatures in the stack have a higher power than toughness, just so we can really capitalize on that ability. Now we do need to control our party and we're going to do so by removing our opponent's permanence in Midnight Pranks. Goblin Creator Maker for 1 and a red is a 2-2. Two, two. We can pay 1 mana and sacrifice it to either do 2 damage to target creature or to destroy target colorless permanent. Flesh Bag Marauder for 2 and a black is a 3-1 when it enters the battlefield each player has to sacrifice a creature. Defile, for one black, is an instant that says Tark Creature gets minus one, minus one for each swamp we control. Cast Down, for one in a black, says we destroy target non-legendary creature. Terminate, for a red and a black, says destroy target creature, it can't be regenerated. And Graph's Rage, for a red and a black, will allow us to force a player to sacrifice either an artifact, creature, or planeswalker of our choice. Brain Spoil for 3 and 2 black says destroy target creature that isn't enchanted, it can't be regenerated, but it's really in here because it also has Transmute. If we pay 1 and 2 black, we can use it to find any card in our deck that costs 5 mana and put it in our hand. Golden Demise for 1 and 2 black is one of the only board wipes in the deck. If we have Ascend, uh, it's even better. Either all creatures get minus 2, minus 2 until end of turn, or if we have the City's Blessing, only our opponent's creatures get minus 2, minus 2 until the end of turn. Massacre Girl for 3 and 2 black has a 4-4 with menace. Whenever Massacre Girl enters the battlefield, each other creature gets minus 1, minus 1 until end of turn. Whenever a creature dies this turn, each creature other than Massacre Girl gets minus 1, minus 1 until end of turn. The beauty of that cycle is once one creature dies, it generally tends to snowball until the entire board is wiped and you're left with a 4-4 menace creature. Let's not forget our important party guests in Who Rocks the Party? Rotog Bugcatcher for one and a red is a goblin warrior and he's a one to a trample. He's going to get an additional plus one plus O oh until end of turn for each creature in your party whenever he attacks. Malkur Blood Priest for one and a black is a two one. When he enters the battlefield, each opponent will lose X life and will gain X life where X is the number of creatures in our party. Coveted Prize for four and a black lets us search our library for a card and put it into our hand and then shuffle our library. If we have a full party, then we may cast that spell if its converted mana cost is four or less from our hand. And this spell costs one less to cast for each member of our party. Ravager's Mace for one a black and a red is an artifact equipment that equips for two a black and a red. When it enters the battlefield, it's going to auto attach to a creature the first time. And the equipped creature is going to get plus one plus O oh for each creature in our party and gain menace. Next, we have Zagroth, Thief of Heartbeats. For four, a black and a red. He's a 4-4 legendary creature vampire rogue. He costs one less to cast for each creature in our parties. He has Flying Death Touch and Haste. And other creatures we control also have Death Touch now. And whenever a creature we control deals combat damage to a Planeswalker, we destroy that Planeswalker. Thwart the Grave for four and two black. We'll return target creature card and another um, creature that has to be one of our party type members, either Cleric, Rogue, Warrior, Wizard card from our graveyard to the battlefield and this spell costs one less to cast for each member of our party. Now we have a handful of tricky menacing cards that help us bring the fright in party crashers. Labyrinth Raptor for a black and a red is a 2-2 nightmare dinosaur with menace. Whenever a creature we control with menace becomes blocked, the defending player has to sacrifice the creature that's blocking it. If we pay a black and a red, all the creatures we control with menace get plus one plus O oh till end of turn. Dream Stealer for two and a red is a one two human wizard with menace. When he deals combat damage to a player, that player discards that many cards. We can eternalize him for four and two black. 
Thrill Scare Mentor for two and a red is a 3-2. When it enters the battlefield, we put a menace counter on target non-human creature we control. If we pay two and a red and tap him, we put a 1-1 one -one counter on each creature we control with mana. Next, we have Sonorius Howlblower for one and two hybrid Rakdos mana. It's a 2-2 two -two with menace, and each creature we control with menace now has to be blocked by three or more creatures, making them much harder to deal with. Frontier Warmonger for 3 and a red is a 4-4 human warrior and whenever one or more creatures attack one of our opponents or planeswalkers they control, those creatures gain mana. So the beauty of this is it's a backup to our commander giving all of our creatures to menace, but it also gives our opponents creatures menace when they attack one another. Let's make it hard for everyone to block. So now that we've gone through all that, let's talk about the lands in the mana base. This time we're running Forge of Heroes. It can tap for a colorless, or we can tap and choose a commander, then enter the battlefield this turn and put a 1-1 counter on it. It's a creature or a loyalty counter on it if it's a planeswalker. Rakdos Carnarium enters the battlefield tap, and when it enters the battlefield, we have to return a land. We can pull to our owner's hand, but it can tap for both of our colors. And then we're going to be running nine mountains and 11 swamps. Now that we've looked at all the cards in the deck, let's do a quick price check. Our deck prices include our Oathbreaker and the shipping cost, but not the cost of our basic lands and are the best available prices on TCG Player at the time of recording. The average deck cost for an Angrath Captain of Chaos deck on Oathbreaker.edhtrek.com is $58.91. Our deck price is going to be quite a bit lower at $27.63. If you want to see a breakdown of this deck's cost, there will be a link posted in the description. This deck was built on a budget, but if you have the resources, here are some deck betterments and improvements you might want to consider. We suggest adding Bedevil for two black and a red. It will destroy target artifact, creature, or planeswalker. And to add it, we suggest removing Fleshbag Marauder. We suggest adding Taurian Mauler for two and a red. It's a 2-2 changeling, and whenever an opponent casts a spell, we put a 1-1 counter on it, which can grow out of control fast. And we suggest removing Moonglove changeling. We think you should add a series of liches to the deck just to keep with Halloween theme. So Vindictive Lich for three and a black is a 4-1 zombie wizard. And when he dies, we get to choose to do one or more of the following modes, but each mode has to target a different player. Target player sacrifices creature, target player discards two cards, and target player loses five life. To add it, we're gonna suggest removing Ravagers and May. Our next lich, Custody Lich, costs three and two black and is a 4-2 zombie cleric. And when it enters the battlefield, we become the monarch. Whenever we become the monarch, target player has to sacrifice a creature. We're going to suggest removing Griven. And finally, we suggest you add a Calculating Lich. For 4 and 2 black, he has Menace, and whenever a creature attacks one of our opponents, that player loses one life, and it's a 5-5 zombie wizard. To add up, we're going to suggest removing Gadrak the Crown Scourge. Now, if you enjoy this deck and everything in it, and you want to join the party, then please comment down below. If you want to support the channel, you can do so by shopping using the TCG Player, Inked Gaming, or even the channel store links in the comments. If you want more deck tech content, then check out the Oath Breakdown playlist here. And again, a huge thank you to you guys and a quick reminder to be like a planeswalker and show your loyalty by subscribing to this channel. Remember, I can't do this without you guys, and I wouldn't.